All right, this right here is our lithium iron phosphate 50 amp hour, 24 volt battery. This thing is pretty amazing. It has a one, two, three cells inside, super long lasting, super powerful batteries, uh, cells. They can put out a uh, hundred, uh, easily a hundred amps. This BMS is rated at 200 amps, but the reason is, and you might be asking why 200 amps when the battery can put out a hundred amps is because I also have these auxiliary inputs, right? And this auxiliary port so that you can add more batteries. So let's say that you want more than 50 amps. You want 100 amps, 150 amps, 200 amp hours of 24 volt battery, right? Uh, this is 1200, 1 1.2 kilowatts. So let's say you want five kilowatts. So you get five of these. Well, you don't need to buy this expensive BMS five times you can you can you can put a bms on each one of these packs and then connect all the the output uh the main outputs together in parallel but you don't have to because let's say that your biggest load it's 100 150 amps well this bms alone can power that load right and so all you need to do is install it in one battery and then daisy chain from the auxiliary ports here here and here to the other four batteries or five or whatever, you know, and you can expand that way and only having to buy this expensive BMS once if that works for you. Now, if you're going to exceed 200 amps or you're going to run around 200 amps continuous, I would suggest maybe getting two of these and having at least two of these batteries with the BMS and then daisy chaining into it through the auxiliary ports and then, you know, combining the two BMSs outputs final that's another way also i am working on another bms which uh, it's it's a bigger one so in case you want to run like extra extra big battery systems using these right but for now this has expandability options you will be able to uh build up to i'd say up to 20 uh kilowatt hour battery systems using these right so up to 20 of these and you can install them in here and then run as long as your max load doesn't exceed it doesn't get very close to 200 amps right so there we go how do you install this let me show you very very simple so we start by taking away these uh screws this one these two and these two the two positive the two negative most negative and then this one right here this one is just for mechanical, so it'll hold the board up there. And once you take one screw, uh, one nut off, then you replace it with the included five millimeter standoff. There you go. So you do that times five. They'll have to be tight because those are gonna carry all of your current. Now, this ones are a little bit tricky because these ones have a uh, a nut, not a nut, it's a nut on the top, but a bolt on the bottom. And it's not, you have to hold it from the bottom or else it'll spin. But there you go, you put that in there like this, you take this one off, do this. There you go like that, boom. Okay, so now we got the negative goes towards the top. And now, uh, before you do that, then the next thing is going to be the ribbon. It's a ribbon with two cables. You install that there. Then you install this in here. There should be no sparks whatsoever. But I always like to check. Don't assume that everything's 100% right. Then you put your screws on here. These are the negative side of the screws. Then you put the positive side of your screws here. We go. And the two remaining are going to be for these the auxiliary expansion ports, right? So these are terminals in here. Now, I will just put them in here. If you're not going to be using them, you just put them in there, tighten them in there, and leave them there. But everything else is going to be tightened here to be used. The last step to do is just to connect this thing right here. Oh, which is backwards. Well, that's not gonna help us. Is this the right one? 
this is gonna be the right one. Okay, last thing to do is to connect this uh, ribbon here. You know? What you should do is you should check the voltage. If the voltage here matches the voltage here, the positive and the negative into this board and then the output, then that means the BMS is on, right? And so, so this is the output, 26.6. Now let's do the input, 26.6. So that's usually indication that the BMS is on. If you were to disconnect this, then that's gonna change. Let's see if that is the case. Sometimes this react different, but there we go. 18, 18 volts, right? When it's 26 at the input. Yeah, so there you go. This is off right now because it doesn't have this connected. And as soon as you connect this, the BMS turns on. Now you have, uh, well, you should be able to have up to 200 amps of power in here, 24 volts. And of course, if you're gonna daisy chain a bunch of these, obviously you connect the other ones right into the auxiliary and then you connect the ribbon from the auxiliary battery into this port right here, right? This port. And then from here, it could daisy chain to many others because that's what these uh, ribbons allow you to do. Put a bunch of connectors, connect one here, go one this way, then another one that way. And you should put this battery with the BMS right this is the exit and entry point of your battery system that should be in the middle of your battery pack what that means is that if you have two more to add you shouldn't put them all like on this side right like this one and then this each into that because then this would be at the edge you should put uh from here going to one battery and then from here going to another battery right uh and then if you're gonna add two more then it should go on each side of this battery right so this should be towards the center of your uh well electrical path right because then the it gets distributed a lot better so uh here's a little simple diagram to show you that a little bit better uh and that's how it should be so there you go this is now a finish 24 volt battery 50 amp hours lithium iron phosphate with a123 cells capable of 100 amps on the battery but 200 amps on the bms and it's got expandability options. There you go. You will be able to find the kit to build this BMS at jack35.com. And then you can order, uh, you'll find the links to order all the components, which is just uh, the BMS here, uh, there, right? Obviously also, uh, here's another thing for you, uh, you guys watching this that you don't know. All of my projects are open source. What that means is that I will give you the links to buy all the components that I use to make these products, right? I You don't have to buy them from me. You can go and buy them directly from the, my source where I go and get them. And that way you can save a bunch of money. It's a little bit more work. You have to solder some stuff and you have to order from like 10 different vendors and you'll get you know deliveries at different times and stuff like that. But it is well worth it if you are on a tight budget and you're trying to get the most bang for your buck, the most battery, right? And so I will put a list, uh, uh, a link to this. This uh, projects are sponsored by PCBWay.com. They sponsor me and I will put up a, a project over there at their website where you can go and get a list of all the components and you can order the, the, the PCB boards directly from them. They're a printed circuit board uh, house in China that prints them, right? And you can order multiple, uh, I think a minimum of five of these, and then, you know, you can order up to a thousand or thousands of them, right? So there you go. Thank you, PCB Way, for sponsoring this project. And thank you guys for supporting all my crazy projects, my battery projects. Uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys if you need a cheap, this is about 50% of what's commercially available, uh, right, at the price right now. So these are very, very price competitive. Nobody can touch them because they're DIY, because we have to go and do this kind of stuff, right? But they're high quality cells, A123s with like 4,000, 5,000 cycle life on them. Uh, and so this is a pretty good project. All right, thank you. We'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.